Well, hello, that's me again. Today is October 16th, 2024. I believe it is Wednesday. And what you saw in the beginning is the uh, very friendly visit of the very tolerant uh, Oterka Iskanders, uh, five of them, uh, to the, well, strategic actually repairing plant in the city of Nikolaev, which is still under control of the, whatever is left of the so-called Ukraine. And for those people who always listen to all kinds of the narratives about the uh, Russian technology, this is uh, showing you actually gives you very good space time uh, reference point in terms of the velocity of the Iskanders, apart from their incredible precision. And uh, you can see yourself what Mach 6 is on the approach. This is, mind you, Mach 6. It's still hypersonic. And uh, Iskanders are quasi-ballistic missiles. That means what? They fly very low and they maneuver throughout their uh, old, basically, uh, flight path. That is why no uh, NATO air defense complex can intercept them. They say that they intercept them, but of course they don't. So, but it gives you a little bit of the uh, understanding because uh, thanks to the defense ministry, we can see ourselves how pre precise and how really fast those things are. And again, do not forget, this is just the part of the terminal of the approach and they are maneuvering usually when they approach. So good luck intercepting them. So, and yes, the result, this repair, uh, repair plant has been basically wiped out. Five buildings have been um, destroyed uh, together with the equipment and together with the 10 armor pieces there, uh, including six tanks. So it's not going to be repairing anything anymore. This is also kind of a warning to those people who continue to like it was the issue of the honor of the West. We know in the West they are all honorable people. They have integrity and all that about all those you know so-called peaceful vessels with the corn right for some reason they decided to say it's corn uh and they were arriving to Odessa uh, with obviously instead of corn delivering all those NATO weapons. Well, they don't do this anymore. Russia sunk or destroyed a number of them and now the Odessa port is pretty much empty. And it will remain empty because, I mean, the, you know, those things are over. So, and why they are over? We have, oh yes, or today, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, we have the Zelensky victory plan. This is yet another victory plan uh, and as correctly Maria Zaharova responded it's uh, the Ukrainian leader proposal is a set of the incoherent slogans which I totally agree those uh, items or points are nothing more than the wet fantasies about you know for everything good against everything bad for Ukraine of course and yeah so nobody takes this seriously anymore and Moscow has dismissed Vladimir Zelensky much touted eight point victory plan is nothing but a plan of the for the misfortune of Ukraine Russian foreign minister spokeswoman Maria Zaharova has said in the statement I exactly so there's nothing to discuss that it's the same like yeah i will present the eight um point plan of me becoming superman hey it's a victory plan all right uh do i want to become superman sure why not i would love to fly around the world but the point is that yeah it's all the pr and again as i already stated uh those people in washington and elsewhere in the west they do PR only. They cannot do anything of substance, anything tangible, because as I already stated, we are looking at the systemic catastrophe of the, of which I warned for 10 years now, of the elite producing machine in the West and especially in the US. Most of those departments of the political science, of the sociology, of the history, of what have you, uh, let alone all those new types of the humanitarian uh, so-called education like the queers studies and things like that uh, in any Harvard or you know uh, Princeton or Yale what have you uh, they are just absolutely academic frauds and they prepare the morons like in Georgetown University who go out and then begin to populate all those you know cushy uh, sinecures in all those you know government jobs but the fact that they have no clue well what do you expect 
they might buy and even they i believe don't buy this bs anymore from ukraine and mr zelensky but um just to demonstrate to you how bad it is uh you can go and take a look at the uh, mr burns uh mr burns uh, used to be the uh, ambassador he is the guy who went through the system of the whatever foreign uh, uh service in the united states probably spoke from the get-go because yeah when you become a uh, ambassador in Russia, not that he accomplished anything there except they're wasting everybody's time there. But, um, you know, you probably already spoke. You do work for the, uh, obviously, uh, the foreign service of your respective country. And obviously, even uh, those uh, ambassadors who are not spooks, they always are connected to the sections which obviously have all those, you know, residents of the intelligence services. And so, well, here's Mr. Um, Burns, who obviously learned absolutely nothing, which is expected from these people, uh, former U.S. Uh, ambassador uh, to Moscow and now the uh, CIA director, he spoke uh, for 50 minutes uh, on the whatever threat conference. Uh, and you know what is an amazing? First, he's not very upbeat, and he talks about those global challenges and things like that. And I don't know why he decided to take this path. Obviously, it's very prestigious to say that. He I used to be, you know, director of the CIA. The problem is he spoke for 51 minutes and he literally said nothing. It was the, this set, I mean, the collection of the, you know what, platitudes about all those challenges. And I can tell you one thing. I, I can bet you, you know, the guy, the, the CIA director, uh, he will not understand anything, for example, like the people of the level of the uh, brigade or div let alone division commander in Russia will start explaining to him why this is happening this way uh, but not another he simply doesn't have the tool and as uh, our wonderful common friend larry johnson uh, said many times on many occasions that you know what basically any bad news uh, on by the analyst the cia analyst uh, are sifted out you know basically they they are disposed of at the middle level of the cia and actually those people and again make no mistake Mr. Burns has zero, zero uh, tool, as pretty much very many people in CIA, in terms of the an analysis of the you know, military, political, and combat situation in the world, which is the largest war since World War II. And, and so there you go. What can I say? Um, but yes, he kind of proved it by speaking for, well, uh, not full 51 minutes, but 50 minutes, let's say it. And it was excruciating listening to him because he said absolutely nothing of substance other than same kind of slogans which are in this eight uh, uh, point plan victory plan by Zelensky. These people are delusional. I don't know if he's uh, why he said uh, so sad. Maybe he his you know remaining intellect tells him that he is basically saying BS, which uh, even the kindergarten children, children are uh, basically. Um, laughing at him and just to demonstrate to you uh why things are so bad we can also take a look because it is actually secondary it's gallop it's a gallup poll it's uh, from the gallup website and as you can see yourself uh this is uh they show you americans trust in media 1972 2024 and as you can see yourself the green stuff i deliberately made two uh, uh best fit uh, straight lines to show you that in general is a great uh, uh, uh the green thing is for those people who have the great deal or fair amount of trust it dropped to 31% actually. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> and while the dotted blue line who said none at all, guess what, went up 31% and majority of the Americans said that's what's what is great about Americans. Uh, and probably this even, you know, probably liberal streak, uh, libertarian streak, pardon me, uh, helps them figuring this out is that yeah, they don't trust anymore basically all this BS which is being produced by uh, US media, which by extension are nothing more than the propaganda tool of the US government. And that means what? People don't believe, I mean, 
two thirds of uh, Americans don't believe all this garbage because this is absolutely insane. And that actually relates extremely well with Mr. Uh, Burns trying to pretend that he knows what he's talking about, which he does not. You cannot close this gap if you never grew up with that and haven't been trained in this. This is not 19th or early 20th century. And so you have this guy, former ambassador, CIA director, talking about this platitudes and challenges to which United States realistically has no answer. And it will not have answer. You can quote me on that. Why I, as I already stated, read my four books, I might gather my, you know, the spirituals and moral and physical forces to write the fifth one, because what we are observing is collapse. And we are living within collapse. And so as if not... Uh, um, to demonstrate to you why this whole position of the uh, combined West, which still continues to prod uh, this uh, Zelensky clown, he is clown, and I'm not going to be go uh, getting into the metaphysics of this conflict because, for example, uh, it will require, I mean, a couple of hours just to explain basic things on the metaphysics, on the larger things, spiritual things, if you wish, which also drive it uh, and... Um, I speak about one of them that, for example, Americans, not all, but many Americans, they simply have no toolkit to re really grasp what continental warfare is. But, so uh, I seldom uh, present uh, opinions of people uh, from, for example, uh, Russian media. I don't uh, rate Russian media, mainstream media, also uh, much higher than that uh, uh, those of the United States, or let alone London or, you know, uh, Germany. But... This is very remarkable. Here is what Mr. Um, uh, uh, one of, of the, you know, uh, how to put it politely, uh, reactions, if you wish, or uh, uh, an, an, an analysis, <laughs> an analysis of Mr. Georg Mirzayan. And he actually has a point when yesterday he writes about what to expect for the Zelensky regime in 2025. And he, uh, this is the summary. He talks about that the pride of a chance to negotiate amicably, Moscow will liberate more territories, both from among those that are now part of the Russian Federation and from the still Ukrainian ones where they are Russian cities. This is a rather dramatic uh, change even about people who have this kind of somewhat, you know, uh, Western uh, leaning. That doesn't mean they are bad people. It's just that, you know, that we all have our preferences and biases, no doubt about it. And so he talks about, Mirzayan talks about the situation with the political and uh, uh, financial and what have you situation in the West and all their promises. For example, von der Leyen, she's ready to uh, kill everybody else but support Ukraine. And I will explain to you, well, you you cannot change the Nazi. I mean, and so, but what Mirzayan and rights is correct. European stubbornness in waging war against Russia will only lead to convincing the Russian leadership, it's actually already happened, of the inevitability of further solving the tasks of the special military operation by purely military methods. And Europe's inability to really give Ukraine the amount of money and weapons demanded by Vladimir Zelensky will lead to the fact that Russia's military methods will be extremely effective. That is, simply put, deprived of a chance to negotiate amicably. Moscow will liberate more territories both from among those that are now part of Russian Federation and from among the still Ukrainian ones where there are Russian cities. So he is absolutely correct and as I already stated and this was you know, discussed by me and covered by me uh, in depth, um, there is nobody to talk to in uh, Europe and the United States. And again, Europe is nothing. It's no, they are nobodies. And um, if you want to kind of see what I'm talking about, um, here is, we have the Bloomberg. Uh, Bloomberg, and you, you all remember, I covered it uh, about few, uh, a few weeks ago when Mr. Mario Draghi came up with the plan. It's pretty much the same quality of the plan as that of Zelensky, or about the same understanding of the situation by Mr. Burns. And as you can see yourself, he... Uh, 
some people, you know, buy like Ben Seals, uh, three days ago writes that Europe is almost out of time to defend its place in a brutal world. And he, he talks about the combination of political paralysis, external threats, and economic malaise is threatening to end the European Union's ambitions to become a global force in its own right, pushing member states towards defending their own interests instead. Yes, this is actually the euphemism, or if you wish, the, the uh, definition, by other words, of the dissolution of the European Union, which was from the get-go nothing more than the artificial uh, construct, and Europe is going back to its own ways. And now there's, of course, a Russian nuclear weapons and a Russian military economic might to keep those, uh, you know, pesky guys in their place. So, but yeah, Europe is doomed. It's not just doomed. It's actually imploding as we speak. And so, as you can see yourself, um, my gosh, when you read this, it's like, really? And these are the people who probably have like 25 PhDs and all kind of crap. And yet, look, look how they arrive to the conclusions. Oh my gosh, if you wanted to be a geopolitical power, then economic might is the key ingredient, says Gunt Guntram Wolf, a professor of the Free University in Brussels and senior fellow of the Bruegel think tank. Productivity gr growth has been a disaster. Europe is still rich, but this, differen uh, this differentiates over the 20 years have mass uh, differentials uh, have massive implications. Oh no, <laughs> you cannot believe it, that some people begin to get the message. But hey, what do I know? I don't have 25 PhDs in economics and what have you, sociology, to understand the fundamental thing that these are metals, resources, ores, you know, the processing powers, and, you know, which create this uh, military and economic might. But yeah, those people thought that if they create more zeros in their uh, computers, that they somehow matter. No, they don't anymore. And they talk about that fundamental problem is the world is experiencing the dramatic shifts of climate breakdown. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't say that it's dramatic shifts, but it's just climate changes. It always changes. And so what can we do? Now he talks about demographic change. Yes, that is true. Europe will cease to be, uh, to be Europe. Believe me, it's coming. Uh, as I already stated, France, for example, there are uh, areas of France which have nothing to do with French and they will be Arab. They will be African that what have you. They will not be French. France is done. Same uh, is basically encroaching on uh, Germany. Germany and many other European countries, so they wanted it, let them enjoy it. So, and then of course they produced this yet another, I mean, this is sheer stupidity. There is no post-industrial economy. It never existed other than the figment of imagination of people who never held a real job in their life from all those think tanks and, as I already stated, useless fraudulent academic institutions those economic schools like you know so there never was post-industrial economy and never will be all our economies are industrial they are based well not europeans anymore but normal countries they base their economies on the production ranging from the of course consumer goods and food to the high tech so yeah and here concludes that all phenomena where Europe's ability and willingness to respond are lagging. It's not lagging. Europe doesn't have resources and it doesn't have energy. Period. This is the way it is. And I understand for many Europeans it's horrible to listen to this, but that's just the truth of the matter. So, and he's talking about something is changing very, very dramatically and very, very deeply in this world. Former Polish President Alexander Kwasniewski said, yeah, sure, it is. Yeah. And so they talk about United States with disruptive election, with the public finances of unsustainable footing. Yeah, we know this, but those nations have systems that centralize decision making to a large extent. No, United States doesn't have this uh, system anymore and in fact is you can quote me for 10 years I've been saying that United States is not a governable country so and um, so to conclude it you know these people from Bloomberg and they said that Europe is in danger said David Galbraith a tech interpreter and investor who has spent his career working on both sides of the Atlantic and perceives the world economy to be in the midst of the transformation akin to the industrial revolution no it's just the continuation of the industrial Industrial revolution and uh, one would say you can say that it's a revolution in historical terms but the point is Europe is already behind and as Mr. Um, 
uh, this guy, uh, 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 Armenian guy from the Vzgliad, from which I told you, uh, uh, Mirzayan, who wrote this piece about uh, Russia taking more, uh, well, basically liberating all Novorossia, which is called Novorossia. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, what can they provide? Uh, they can provide, a cannot provide anything except for maybe some cash. That's the only thing they are able of dealing with. I mean, I'm talking about combined West. And so here, <clears throat> the result threatens to cause damage that goes beyond simply lagging in investment and productivity. The region's leaders are losing faith in the European project. Oh, it was artificial construct to start with. And uh, yeah, they are not, nothing but their... Uh, <clears throat> uh, well, sp speaking plainly, are slap bitches of the United States and yeah now of course we have this bunch of the you know uh, well, the type of the iterations of the Nazis like Annalena Baerbock and all those uh, Russia hating uh, people you know in Germany we have now Mr. Scholz <clears throat> uh, for some reason trying to stay relevant he says that um, Scholz reaffirms readiness to negotiate with Putin. It has to be understand, understood that it's uh, like uh, Field Marshal Cato during the signing uh, signing of the uh, capitulation <clears throat> with the pre within the presence, uh, obviously, of the uh, uh, Russians, uh, 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 British, and Americans. Uh, he saw the French general. And Cato, who was a military criminal and was hung, uh, uh, he actually said, well, those guys also defeated us, you know, so, and this is exactly the same situation. Scholz is nobody, as is Germany in terms of any kind of the, uh, uh, you know, whatever they can bring to the, to the table. They can't bring nothing, and they decide nothing, absolutely. And so General uh, Chancellor Olaf Scholz has expressed a readiness to negotiate with Russian <coughs> President Vladimir Putin to bring the Ukraine conflict to an end. It's not up to Scholz. The only thing which it is up is to Washington and people in Washington. They don't know what they're doing. Uh, they are just scared also. Like Germany, Germany is the sacrificial lamb. It is being, not will be. It is already in the process of being laid down basically at the altar and sacrificed. And it is sacri sacrificing is going on very well. So Germans will elect this SPD, whatever they held the party of uh, and they will end up with pretty much same result that as i already stated all those local successes of the alter alternative for germany are absolutely meaningless but we'll see you know so anyway it is too late for germany anyway so and then he basically confirmed that that therefore it is also true that when we are asked whether we will also talk to russian president we answer yes we will the problem of course russians will not ask because russians don't negotiate with chihuahuas and simple as that they decide not Nothing, they are nobodies. And pardon me for this straightforward talk. Europe, as in general, and it will be now falling behind technologically and economically, we know what is going on. So it's over, it's done with. Moscow will talk only, only to Washington. And even after that, it will be just talking, it will be primarily dictating of the conditions. So, just to demonstrate to you what is going on in this respect, my, our dear friend Larry Johnson talks about this. And he gives us uh, some statistics, uh, which is, of course, he explains why they are hurting, uh, they are gaslighting, they are lying, which is very good at that, uh, in, in Washington. He's talk, uh, talking about... <clears throat> at the uh, uh, territories in the uh, square kilometers Russian forces captured. Uh, and again, don't forget, uh, uh, it's a, it's a non-stop fight in a practically urban combat, non-stop. So they say that <clears throat> their data was uh, 468 square kilometers of territory, so there is another 351 square kilometers of territory in August. And so <clears throat> the Gaza Strip, he gives them... <clears throat> Uh, explanation and uh, that uh, for a year now the uh, allegedly the best fighting force like ever you know Israelis they just 
win everybody uh, everywhere and, uh, well actually they didn't did, uh, do well uh, uh, considering the fact that he talks about and we're not talking about empty farmland the russians are in the process of enveloping the ukrainian troops that invaded kursk and have captured scores of villages and towns along the line of contact in donbass the western press is struggling to come to grips with the reality of what is happening on the ground well they are struggling because most of them not all but majority of them are people without uh, honor without integrity and they are prostitutes in a both figurative and direct sense of the word they will suck anybody's extension just for be promoted and you know feel very good about themselves so you cannot talk as i already stated to most of the western journalists especially from the mainstream media without having you know all kinds of necessary tools like masks and ha have a very strong um, uh, antibiotic prescribed to you after you know communicating with them those are people who are also to a large uh, degree war criminals and it is too late now for them to start kind of giving the you know the reverse that they suddenly start report on on the uh, basically atrocities of Israel and on the fact that Russia basically demolishing armed forces of Ukraine to the last man now what we have we are seeing there is well that's what we are seeing there let's take a look we have this we see uh, losses uh in uh, uh as you can see yourself yesterday or oh, for the first time they dipped below 2000 still very horrifying number yet another four tanks and apcs yet another 14 armored vehicles yet another 40 artillery and mortars there is just a slaughter there and um if you take a look at uh the maps and again keep, keep in mind these are not maps per se they are schemes real maps are classified and you will not see them the only good maps which give you better understanding on the situation are by our uh, good friend Marat Hairulin and those people who are working with him who are also professional military with a prof military education but if you take a look at for example Pakrovsk also known as Krasnoarmeysk remember I spoke about this to you uh, it's uh, one uh, the operational art 101 you if you go back months ago uh, not months even two weeks ago and you compare today you see yourself the evening of the front line and essentially developing well they are in uh, in effect so-called blocking strikes by russians to actually prevent any kind of the possible uh, you know a uh, flank strike by whatever is remaining of those uh, armed forces of ukraine because basically they move uh those reserves now desperately from one place to another where they get killed and as you can see yourself the front is evening and we have now obviously this uh, uh situation which is oh uh, yeah doesn't look uh, good selidova is now practically completely uh, surrounded and uh, this is classic uh you know in, in, in it's called investing of the cities you do not have all the russians already in Solidova, but basically you surround it leave a little bit of the uh hole for them to try to escape you annihilate for whatever is inside and then on those roads like e50 as you can see yourself they will try to run which they, that's what they do armed forces of ukraine constantly they will be annihilated with by use of the uh, uh, Russian uh, combat aviation and you know uh, yeah and as you can see yourself you take a look at this this is the uh, from the Russian defense minister showing a little bit of the combat work of those good old rooks legendary planes they can take insane punishment they are combat attack or called uh, which I use primarily in close air support but also they are capable even of the uh, air to air combat two of them actually downed recently one of the last remaining su-27s by the uh, armed forces of ukraine that tells you actually how good those guys are and of course whoever flies now whatever is left of the uh, ukrainian air force so and uh, <clears throat> this is the kind of sort of c trap which i constantly need to produce to you uh because yeah you sometimes need to be updated on that and 
you know to keep at least uh, understanding of the flow of the events and <clears throat> just to demonstrate you something which is very <laughs> interesting uh, speaking about those uh, industrial capabilities and especially energy uh, the article in the uh, RIA news specifically talking about the <clears throat> relation of the economies and industries in Russia and for example in the combined West and they <laughs> But they, they use the, they call it artificial intelligence. It is not, it's a neural network, basically, which produces that thing. <clears throat> and you have to admit, it's pretty impressive because this is exactly how Russia looks like today. It is just one gigantic industrial uh, economy expanding with incredible speed. And it's not only energy or agriculture, there's like truckload of the uh, high-tech industries uh, ranging from the machine building complex and of course you already know that uh yeah it's kind of self-evident uh, but many people still lack this logic i don't blame them that uh the country which produces su-57 on its own completely out of russian uh, everything and produces uh uh, has the space program, which is one of the top two in the world. Uh, this country will necessarily have the ability to produce everything else. But many people, uh, especially from those, uh, you know, Harvard economic schools, and they have no clue what they're talking about. They will not understand. They don't have tool uh, to grasp it. But because they, they judge the technological development of the world only through their iPhones. Tesla's maybe. That's, that's another thing. They think that Tesla is a high tech. So, well, it's virtue signaling uh, useless craft, especially during the winter, but yeah, well, <clears throat> and as a result, we're looking at uh, now what is the approach to the, uh, Kazan, to Kazan, which will be in, uh, well, actually six days now, and the new world will be completely formalized. The whole world will be there, with the exception of people like Scholz or Biden. I don't even know what they mean and what they can solve and what can decide, but it is what it is. And this is what I needed to give you today, this sort of like sea trap, if you wish. And um, as always, those who like what I do, guys, please subscribe to my channel. And those who like, uh, you know, what I do, please, and can afford it, please uh, support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee and two. And I'll talk to you later, guys. Have a nice rest of the week. Bye-bye.